Hello friends, today we will discuss about origin of GST in India. GST as you know is an indirect tax imposed or levied on all supply of goods and services which is applicable in India from 1st July 2017. Now how this GST came into force in India when this idea came into the mind of the India government that we will discuss in this classes. These are the new tax system, indirect tax system in India after introduction of GST. Central government used to impose lots of taxes like central tax, custom duty, sales tax, central sales tax and so on. They have their central taxes, they have their central tax administration acts procedures. Similarly, the state governments used to impose so many taxes including VAT, Octary Duty, Purchase Tax, Entertainment Tax. GST subsumes all these taxes into a single tax system, having a single tax administration, single tax, single law, single act. Now let us see how this idea of GST mooted in India. If you see, in the year 2000, the, the then Prime Minister introduced the concept of GST and they want that we will introduce GST in India. For that purpose, they started or they have created a task force which is commonly popularly known as Kelkar Task Force in 2004. Their main motto was to study and to recommend the government how and when GST can be introduced in India. In the year 2006 and 7, it is for the first time in the budget speech, the then finance minister, Mr. P. Chitambaram, announced that India is going to introduce GST from 1st April 2010. Then on the basis of the recommendation of this Calcar Tax Force Committee, first discussion paper was released by uh, Empower Committee. This first discussion paper was discussed by all the stakeholders, by all the states, by all the tax administrator and finally 115th amendment bill constitutional amendment bill was introduced and it was not accepted again in the year 2014 constitution 122 amendment bill was introduced in lok sabha considering all the recommendations, all the suggestions given by all the states and all stakeholders. On 19th of December 2014, the then India government tabled the Lok Sabha, the 122 or 22nd amendment bill on GST. And it, it was discussed over the parliament in Lok Sabha and finally on August, uh, on 6th May 2016, this bill was passed in Lok Sabha. Then it was sent to the Rajya Sabha. On 3rd August 2016, 3rd August 2016, it was passed in Rajya Sabha. Then it was vetted by the President of India and it becomes the Constitutional 101st Amendment Act 2016 which empowers the government to impose GST. On September 2016, first GST Council meeting was held and on the recommendation of this Council, 
four important act was enacted like central gst act integrated gst act union territory gst act and compensation cess act or compensation to state cess act similarly on april on different dates of april and may june july different states passed their own state gst law and act in their legislature and finally on may 2017 gst council recommends all the laws rules applicable for gst in 2030 june 2017 all the state except jammu and kashmir passes their state act from 1st july 2017 gst was implemented in india but on 8th july 5th july jammu and kashmir state has also passed the state council uh, state uh, gst act as you know in 2019 there was jammu and kashmir reorganization act was passed as a result the jammu and kashmir was uh, divided into two union territory union territory of jammu and kashmir union territory of ladakh the union territory of jammu and kashmir has its own legislative assembly so union territory uh, again that jammu and kashmir passed its own state gst act in 2019 finally so gst is applicable on uh, all the states including jammu and kashmir uh, from 2017 uh, july 1 now what needs for implementation of this gst is your constitutional amendment or constitution's amendment the obvious question arises why there is need for constitution amendment as i have already told you or it is known from the very beginning that in india we have three tier federal system of taxation I means some taxes are levable by the central government exclusive power of the central government some taxes are levable by the state government having exclusive power of levying uh, taxes by the state government and some taxes are levied by the local authority there is no such there was no such taxes which can be levied by both the state and center but gst is the tax session system or tax provisions which is supposed to be imposed by both state central government and state government that's why there is a need for giving powers by the constitution to the state and center so that they can impose gst that's why there is a need for constitutional amendment act 2016 now what are the changes or what are the amendments that are made in the constitutions major amendment is one uh, article article 246a has been inserted as per constitution 101st amendment act 2016 where or which empowers the central government and state government to make laws in respect of gst that means with respect to gst both state government and central government both can make laws then central government has a power exclusive power to make laws relating to interstate supply agar ek one state any supply from one state to another state the central government has a power to make laws not the state government another important article inserted that is 269a in our constitution which is relating to igst integrated gst which shall be levied and collected by the central government on all interstate supply and import agar if there is import of goods and services from other country to our country then igst will be implement uh, will be applied or levied by the central government then it distributes between the center and the states and the distribution of igst shall be made by the central government 
on the recommendation of the GST council. Whatever IGST will be collected on interstate supply, that IGST, out of that IGST, the state person will be shared by the center to the state, to the particular uh, consuming state uh, as per the recommendation of the GST council. This power has been given in Article 269A. Any setup, any setup in between the IGST and SGST or vice versa shall not form a part of the Consolidated Fund of India. This is to facilitate the transfer of funds between the center and the state. There is another constitutional amendment that is Article 366 where some definitions have been given. 366 12 gives goods includes all materials, commodities and articles. 366 12a GST means the tax on supply of goods or services or both except tax taxes on supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Article 366 26a Services means anything other than goods. These are simple definitions given, uh, inserted in the Article 366 because of this GST. And state for the purpose of GST Act includes union territories having their own legislative. There is another uh, changes in the constitutions for implementing GST that is Article 279A which empowers the president to constitute a joint forum, joint forum of central government and state government, which is known as GST council, goods and services council. And the basic purpose of this GST council is to make laws, regulations to administer and manage the GST in India. So these are the original, these are the development of GST uh, or the story behind the GST and implementation of GST in India. Thank you. Stay safe, stay at home. Thank you again.